and welcome to season three. It is season three of Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler. We got to thank my sponsor, my fairy godmother, Linda Lester, for this show. And Jayco's artwork, as always, is behind us and it's beautiful. And I have one of my favorite people sitting next to me. And I always feel like I have to be honest with you and be upfront and tell you when I'm interviewing a very close friend. So here it is. I'm interviewing. I'm actually one of your best friends, right? You are one of my best friends. Sal Pizarro. Now tell the truth. Am I still one of your best you friends? You are still one of my best friends. <laughs> well, we go back. How far do we go back, do you uh, think? Well, I go back with you farther than you go back with me. Now, I never like the sound of that because I know, I know what you're going to say. Because, of course, in our house, we were listening to you, whether it was on, you know, K-Bay or, you know, KLOK. KLOK, Kara. No, I was you not on Kara. Kara. Okay. I was never. That was our friend Kim so Bestel. You, okay. But, but, Kay, but remember, I started out very young. And <laughs> you, you were very young. And what it actually was is your dad. Yes. Uh, because your dad was my parents' insurance guy. Good old Marty Chrysler. Yep. And yes. And so they would always say, oh, we have to listen to Lisa Chrysler because that's Marty's daughter. And you said, okay, mom. Yep. And, and then, then, yeah. And then, but seriously, I mean, how often for me as uh, someone entering the media field, here in the South Bay to finally get to meet you when I did and realize it this was no was big Lisa. deal. No, <laughs> that this is the great Lisa Chrysler. Who, you know, you were you were the voice of the South Bay. Well, and you are. What would we call you? Um, oh, if I was the voice of the South Bay, you are I'm, the I'm, the print I'm, print czar of the South Bay. Boy, that's that sounds horrible on so many levels. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, my column is kind of called Around Town, so a lot of people say I'm the man around town or the man about town. It started, I think, as Man About Town, San yeah. Jose Mercury News. I never gave you an oh, official yeah. so, introduction. Yeah, yeah that's that. Sal that's Pizarro. Sal Pizarro. Yeah, I write the Around Town column for the Mercury News. I have since I took over for our dear friend Lee Weimers back in 2005. And he was both of our dear yeah. friends. And, of yes. course, he was a Los Gatos guy. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. Too bad I didn't do the show back then because I would have loved to have him sitting in your chair well. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Did Lee train you? Uh, Lee trained me as well as he could because, and I understand it now, either you really can't train someone how to do this kind of job. It is, you can, you just have to jump into it. It's true. It's getting to know people. It's getting to know the communities that you're covering and then it comes. You can just, you can tell people, well, go to these things and talk to these people, but you really don't understand it until you're doing it. Because you're not going as a news reporter. Right. You're, you're kind going of going as... as the fly on the wall. You're the observer and sometimes the participant. Yes. You know, it's kind of like community storytelling, what we're doing. It really is. You know, you are repeating or relaying or making up somebody else's story, I guess. Well, hopefully not making it up. <laughs> I try to avoid that. That's true. Although sometimes, you know, the, and sometimes actually the real story is better than anything I could make up. So Yes. How many times does that happen? A lot? Uh, quite a few where I, I will be especially having a conversation with someone over dinner uh, or an event and they will tell me something that happened to them uh, two years ago. And I'll say, well, why didn't you tell me that two years ago? That would have been a great yes. call. Like, I didn't want anyone to know. <laughs> so, well, you're telling me well, now. Now, you are the last, other than Mr. Roadshow, Gary Richards, aren't you the last columnist, really, in the San Jose in, Mercury? In, in local news, in yes. In local news. Well, we've got sports columnists, and we have, you know, business, uh, we have some syndicated business people. But, uh, yeah, I'm the last local columnist left, and... We had a lot more when I started, but that is the way of this industry. Uh, yes, isn't it? So you're the last man standing. That's uh, people keep uh, referring to me and say, "Oh, well, you'll turn out the uh, lights on your way out." And I say, "I don't want to be the one to turn out the lights." <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. It's That's, an honor. It's well, an honor. So I gotta say, I think you are probably the most liked person in Silicon Valley. You well, think that's well, kind of fair? Uh, I hope so. You ever heard anybody say a bad word about you? Uh, other than maybe Amy, your wife? I was going to say outside of my family, <laughs> no. Uh, my daughter Mia likes to say, well, you're kind of famous in San Jose. But I think that might extend to just, you know, the Santa Clara County area. She just, she, she doesn't uh, know how famous I am in Campbell and Los Gatos and Santa Clara. <laughs> she doesn't know who you really think you are. <laughs> no. Yeah, something like you know, that. But I strive, you know, the nice thing about my job is I get to be the good cop. Yes. And I get to write about the good stories that take place in our community. Yes. And, you know, you remember when you would be telling so many of those stories, and you're still doing it. 
uh, it's nicer than writing about crime and fire and all the horrible things that we don't really like to right. read about. And I get to write about people doing good things in our community. So since you're talking about writing, yes. I got, well, you got, we have to share this story. Okay. The last day on K Bay for me and Sam. Yes. And you said, let me be with you that morning. I, yeah, I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to witness this last, you know, this last <laughs> broadcast. I, I showed up, it was a cold winter's morning as we knew it would yes. be. Yes. You let me in and I, you know, it was a motion. Oh my city. gosh! Well, because I did not want to leave, I was not ready to leave. They, you showed that. They, that, was, that was very clear. And during what nobody knew is on the air. Once that mic went on, it was ah, oh. and then commercial break. Click. Hysterical. Yep. Hysterical. Every single commercial break. You were, you were in tears for a great deal of the non-broadcast <laughs> yes. portion of that. And uh, you show. would come over and you'd give me this this bear hug and say it's gonna be okay. And I said no, it's not. <laughs> and, and I don't know how you guys got through that show either because you oh. had so many people not just calling. Yes, coming in. But coming in. Yeah, you know, what Sam Licardo showed yes. up with. Uh, did he show up with donuts or flowers? Um, he both. brought flowers, he I brought think. Flowers. Yes. Somebody else showed up with donuts. Yes. It was, uh, I think you brought nothing. I, I, <laughs> what did you bring to the table? Brought, I brought a notebook and a camera. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So let's talk about some of the stories. First yeah. off, people always want to know, because I know wherever you go, can you write about me or can you write about this? How do you decide what you write about? Oh, I've got a dartboard in my office. Are you serious? I, no. I, 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 <laughs> sometimes I wish it was that easy. You know, I look for a good mix. I think the first thing I want is a story that's going to be interesting to my readers. So if it's interesting to me, that's the first thing. Okay. Do I think this is interesting? Do I think this will have appeal for people? Uh, and then after that, I look for who's the audience for this story and is this an audience that doesn't often uh, hear themselves? Is this someplace, is this an organization or an event that I haven't written about before? Is this something new? Uh, you yeah, know, what's really unfortunate is a lot of times, especially lately, my hand has been forced because what I end up writing about several times a year are institutions that uh, are closing or going away, like yes. in the case of your morning show. Uh, I write about bars and restaurants that are... And we've had a lot of lives. closures. Yep. Yes. In fact, we've had a few in Los Gatos that we might talk about. So, you know what? I think we're going to take a break, um, introduce you to Leicester Square, if you've never seen it before. And we're going to come back with Sal Pizarro because I want to get that Los Gatos connection. And I know you do, too. So community storytelling, Lisa Chrysler with our guest, Sal Pizarro. And we'll see you back in a little bit. Hi, it's Lisa Chrysler. I'm at Leicester Square right here at the corner of Blossom Hill Road and Los Gatos Boulevard. A lot of fun things to do. Ken! Lisa, I didn't so even nice to see you. Finish my sentence. I'm so surprised to see you. What are you doing here? Well, we live close by and we're taking Rocky to the vet today. So do you have time for a cup of coffee at Phil's with me afterwards? Sure. Is it your treat or mine? It's definitely your treat. And Rocky's coming too. I, good with me. I am so glad to run into you at Leicester Square. It's one of my favorite places. It's one of my favorite places too. And we've been to Varenza and Super Duper and Phil's and we love going here. It's and so you know where I live, I have no flowers. So I come here to Leicester Square to enjoy all the flowers. They're gorgeous. So the motto here that Linda Lester coined is meet me at the square or meet us at the square or meet your besties at the square. I meet everybody at the square. It's Leicester Square in Los Gatos. Come on by and cheers. Yes. Well, welcome back to Community Storytelling with our guest, Sal Pizarro. I, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. But you know, he's one of my best friends. So it's like I'm sitting here, all that's missing is our wine. All that's missing is our wine. Darn it, next time. We've got this wonderful K-Cat coffee though. Yes, but, but no wine. But no wine. <laughs> There's we'll a reason that for that, yeah. It, 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 this show would go on for two hours <laughs> yes. if we had wine. So we were talking about closures and we've had so many in Silicon Valley of late and Los Gatos we've lost some dear friends including a big one with C.B. Hannigan yes I and mean, I remember your column on that and that place you know if you want to start we're, we'll get into our stories but I will tell you C.B. Hannigan's was one of my favorite hangouts because it was such a a great non-pretentious place yes and you could go in there you could be 
uh, a stranger, as they say. I mean, all the great Irish bars are that way. Uh, if you're a stranger, you're just meeting people. They'll come up and talk to you. And of course, Johnny Hannigan was such a great character running that place. Uh, I loved it so much. I was so sad to see it go. St. Patrick's Day is not the yes. same in Los Gatos without, well, without it. Well, you know, and I always think there's, he'll come back somehow. But maybe not. You know, I, I hope that about so many of our old institutions. I know. Uh, and I've sometimes been disappointed. Like Sal and Lisa, these old institutions. Sal and Lisa, but Sal, <laughs> but and, Sal and Lisa. Sal and Lisa. <gasps> we could do, okay. Well, hey, what? That's another business plan. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I mean, how long is your column going to go on for? Ever? Forever? Well, but there's always, you, as I know. No, Lee, Lee wrote it for 40 years. Okay, but as I know. I'm on year 14. I was on year 30, and that was it. So I'm thinking, Sal and Lisa, we could have a show on KCAT. Oh. Would you be in for that? Uh, I would be in for that if you are doing it with me. Uh, hello. Okay. That's why I was dropping a little thought in your mind. I mean, so tell me, okay. We'll have to negotiate the salary. <laughs> yes. It has a cork. <laughs> it let, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some red wine in it. So let's pretend we're doing the Sal and Lisa show right okay. now. What would we talk about in Los Gatos? What would we talk yeah, about Yeah, give Los me some well, ideas. Why, you know... I never cease talking about the restaurants in Los Gatos. Oh, they're the best. Tell uh, me your favorites. My favorite, well, if I tell you my favorite, then everyone else is going to know. And it probably. But my absolute favorite is Bywater. Yeah, which, you know, I've never been there. Oh, so, you know, so it's it's a David Kinch restaurant. and, and I you know. Owns, you know, you've talked to David. David Kinch was my very first interview on Community Storytelling. And he's got that other restaurant I can never remember the uh, name. It starts Man with an M, something, something, something yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, that is a wonderful restaurant. Obviously, it is nationally known, if not internationally known. A little on the expensive side. A little on the expensive side. When you have side. kids. And Bywater, on the other hand, is his New Orleans-style yes. restaurant. And it is so fun. Well, New Orleans is like your second home for you and your wife, Amy Pizarro. And we love going I there. Know we were it's... there a year ago. Uh, and, in fact, that, you know, uh, that trip was happening about as we are talking right now. A year ago, and my wife Amy had uh, one desire to have a great meal there that was like street food, the equivalent of our, our bacon wrapped hot dogs here. It was called Yaka Main, and it's sort of like a uh, New Orleans pho if you've had Vietnamese pho soup. It's like a noodle soup, and it was being made on the side of the, the in front of a club we were coming out of one night. <laughs> And we didn't get a chance to have any, and she was so disappointed. Well, who has it on their menu? No. David Kinch over at No. Bywater. Do you ever so, take the kids to, to buy water? You know, we've tried. Uh, it's not quite their menu. Okay. Uh, but we've gone there with several other friends. Okay. Uh, and, and so I'm trying to convince my kids that they, that they want, that they want uh, more New Orleans food in their life. Give me another favorite restaurant. Another favorite restaurant is, well, it just recently reopened, and that's Double D's. Yeah. I wanted to have them on the show so badly before they open, but I guess it's not too late. No. You know, there's some I mean, history there's, in that building. Oh, that is that is one of my favorite places. I mean, just for me, I remember I've been there for so many fun sporting events. Uh, I've been there for sad reasons. We, we had uh, a, friend, a friend who passed away. Uh, we had the reception there after their funeral here in Los Gatos. And, but that, that was the kind of guy he was. Yeah. That he wanted everyone to go have a good time and to mingle and talk. But I just love the history in that place. I'm so glad it came back. Me too. Um, I was so sad well, when that fire happened. And the brothers are wonderful people. Yes. And they're so giving to the community. And uh, so let's see. So Double D's and Bywater and... Well, uh, one of my new favorites has been oak and rye. I, I, I haven't been. Do you eat? <laughs> you know I eat. Do I look like I eat? But I mean, okay. So, and then you can even just down oak and rye, great pizza, great drinks. And then even if you go down to uh, our friend Ed Rathman owns a couple of casual places yes. down right around the corner from here with Main Street Burgers and Willow Street. I think you need to live in Los Gatos. It sounds like you're here a lot. Well, I, you know, may, maybe <laughs> we should think about moving to Los Gatos, but I hear the real estate's a little, a little uh, kind of good price. We'll share. We'll, we'll, do, which, we'll oh. do family sharing, home sharing. I don't, I'm not sure that Amy wants, wants uh, no, no, I don't know. Amy <laughs> likes me too. I'm her other best friend. <laughs> so you grew up in San Jose. I grew up in San Jose, but I spent a lot of time in Los Gatos. We would do the great, I would go to the Greyhound bus station to take the bus to go to Santa Cruz. 
Okay. Because my mother said we could not drive over the hill, and she was probably wise in telling me that. So we would come over to Las Gatas uh, so often, especially when I was in my teens and, and 20s, when I was in high school, we used to come from San Jose. You, re you remember the old, uh, before the freeway was built? Yes. So we would take, you know, Hicks Road and Blossom Hill Road. Blossom Hill Road. A, and, it was a, and it was a shortcut. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, you know, before the days of Waze. Yeah. Uh, when, when everyone knows all the good shortcuts now. But we used to come out here, um, and when I was in my, my 20s, and of legal age, of course, uh, we would go to places like Las Gatas Lodge and Black Watch. And you know, and I've never been to Black out. Watch. And I hear they have, is it called a kamikaze? The kamikaze, yeah, I they heard serve you, them in pint glasses. Th you, what's in it? Oh, uh, it's uh, vodka and uh, lime juice and uh, triple sec, Ooh. and it's... But I've heard... It's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, pretty strong. It's, it'll it'll get you. You don't want to really have more than one of those if you're uh, if you're planning on doing anything later. It's like having one of the industrial strength margaritas at a Keys. Yes. You know the swirls. The swirls. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I had I had one once, and I went to sip another one, and I knocked the bar table over. So one was my limit. One was I'm I'm a lightweight. What can See, I say? Th this is going to be drinking stories with Sal and Lisa. <laughs> Not a bad idea, because you do like to drink. I, I enjoy the, uh, the occasional cocktail. I write about cocktails, so uh, it's, it's always fun to do that. Speaking of cocktails, another closure, Jack Rose Libation House out yes. on Las Gatas, Saratoga For Road. For housing. Closed. Yep. Montessorino townhouses or something, I think. Yeah, so I guess that's technically a Montessorino now. Yeah, yes, yeah. but <laughs> so. we're good. KCAT is yeah, Los Gatas yeah. and Montessorino. Oh, perfect. Yes. And we um, might be able to afford a home in Los Gatos, but probably not in Montesterino. Probably not. No. <laughs> so, Los Gatos, I mean, you, you obviously love this town. It's such a great, close-knit community. I love it, too. Uh, I love the houses around here. I love being able to walk down uh, Santa Cruz Avenue. And just, it's, it's fun to shop. It's fun to just mingle. You can stop and... And, and have a little something to eat. It really is such a great people watching town. But does everybody know who you are? No, I think which there's, is what no? which is, some people do. Um, you know, we, yeah. we, you and I have some mutual friends yes. who hang out here and, and they know who I am. But what's nice is that I can, I can go to places like uh, 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 the coffee shop, Great Bear Coffee Shop and, and hang out. Los Gatos Coffee Roasting. Yes. Oh, the Terry best, Hope. Terry Hope. So Terry knows who I am, but her patrons don't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, can hang out. I, I can hang out there with my little laptop, and, and it's such a peaceful place to work sometimes. Uh, you know, I like going to the Los Gatos Theater since they reopened. Yes. They really did a yes. nice job of renovating that. So I've always wondered, if I was ever to have a complaint about you and your column, Okay. Is the fact that you never write about your darling kids, Alex and Mia. I love them. They are the most well-behaved kids, and I think it's because you drag them every place. <laughs> so, you know, they know they kind of have to be on best behavior. But, you know, my radio show was all about my family, all about my kids. Um, you know, when, when I had stopped talking about Mike, people said, what happened? And, and that was when I finally mentioned he had passed away. I mean, but... Every, you know, I just, my whole life was on the radio. But you kind of don't, you keep your family clear of that for the most part. You know, and it's not anything where I'm trying to protect them. You know, it's not an IO, I want to keep them out of the public eye. It's more that I've got so many other stories to tell that I, I feel know. guilty about not well, telling. But you've got uh, some good kid stories. But, but there are, and they do occasionally get in there. There's, there's the occasional... Uh, personal story, but that's a you know I will have to talk to them now. They're getting older now. They're you know nine and seven, and I know our daughter Mia has gotten uh, to the point where she uh, tells uh, my wife Amy that you know you have to ask my permission before you post yeah, something about so. me on Facebook. Good for her. So she's, Good for she's her. very aware of herself uh, in that sense. Yes. And uh, and of course I'm the kind of guy I just don't want to make it about about me or about them. Uh, but well, this interview was all about you. <laughs> so, and before we leave, I'm gonna, oh, we're going to do this. Okay. We're going to try this out. Um, um, fast questions, fast association, or whatever I call it. I don't know. Um, favorite cocktail? Manhattan. Favorite food? 
pizza. Uh, favorite story you've ever covered? It's a little tough, huh? Favorite story? Just pick one out My of that. Favorite story that I ever covered. You know, I got to meet Buzz Aldrin a couple of years oh. ago, and that was pretty cool. Okay. Now, I will say on a side note, though, hardest story I've ever covered, and I don't know if you're going to ask that, was writing Lee Weimer's obituary. Oh, I can't even imagine. That was... I can't even imagine. Uh, favorite TV show? Ooh. Uh, all time or right now? Eh, anything that comes to mind. Uh, Love Mad Men. Yeah. When it was on. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, really love The Good Place on NBC. Have you watched that? I, I oh, have. Well, I'm too busy watching Ted The Dance Real Housewives. And, oh, I know what you're talking yes. about. Okay. Oh, that is such a fun well, show with a good message, too. So. Yeah. Well, try The Real Housewives sometimes. Okay. Um, a favorite movie? Oh, all time. Okay. I know now, what you're going to Now we're going to get into this whole thing for real quick. Uh, my favorite movie is The Spy Who Loved Me, which is a James Bond movie. Yes. Because I'm a big James I know Bond that. fan. So those are like, those are in a special place for me. Non James Bond favorite movie, uh, actually Casablanca. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And favorite thing about Los Gatos? My favorite thing about Los Gatos is. Community storytelling. Community. No. <laughs> My favorite thing about Los Gatos is how uh, walkable it is. All right. It's just such a Fair wonderful enough. place to walk and see things. All right. That's wonderful. You were, you were the best? Are we still best friends? We're still best friends. We didn't friends. say anything. I didn't offend you. I didn't make fun of we'll you. We'll re-up for the next yeah. Okay. Next well, that's, right. that's right. It's going to be the Sal and Lisa. Yeah. Lisa and Sal. I've never had my name first. Lisa and well, Sal. About time, it is about time. Thank you very much. Community Storytelling at its very finest. Sal has stories, you have stories. And it's so easy to go nominate yourself or nominate a bestie. You go to kcat.org, it takes a couple of minutes. I'm not, I don't even remember who nominated you, I think I did. Well, who knows? But I love this man and I think you probably do too. Until next time, thank you for joining us on Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler.